So good evening everyone and welcome to the 2022 Victorian School Design Awards. My name is Shelley Ware and I'm going to be your MC tonight. I do a little bit of media work which could have got me this gig but it's actually, um, I'm a teacher as well and have been for 25 years and passionately um, passionate about embedding Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander history and culture within your classrooms and your schools and your community. So working as an education consultant with staff and students. So really, really honoured to be here and join you for these special awards and celebrate the innovation of building and modernising schools and kindergartens across, across the state. So this evening, we. We are here on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I would like to acknowledge them as the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet. I pay my respects to their elders past and present and those emerging from those great schools that you are helping to create. I extend that respect to any other elders and First Nations people who are here tonight. So we will begin shortly with Minister Stitt who is announcing our first ever award for kindergarten design. So please make her feel welcome to stay. A few words to kick off our celebrations. Thank you so much Shelley and um, thanks everybody for that warm welcome. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting this evening and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging uh, and acknowledge any Aboriginal elders uh, and First Nations people who are joining us th uh, this evening. I'd also like to acknowledge my colleague Natalie Hutchins who is the Minister for Education and the Minister for Women. Um, and I'd also just like to give a shout out to the Victorian College of the Arts Secondary School, their very talented quartet that we were listening to when we arrived. Um, and we make it easier to develop all sorts of talents when we create the right environment for that learning to occur. Uh, so that applies to all school types, primary, secondary, and the special ones for kids with additional uh, needs. Um, and for years, these awards have really reflected and celebrated the transformation you're helping to make right across the school sector and the education system in Victoria. Uh, and now for the first time, I'm particularly proud that we will be recognising the best work uh, that you're doing in kindergartens in our state. That's important because the next step to achieving uh, our education state reforms are in the area of early childhood education and care, and it will continue to be a growing component of the work that you do with the Victorian School Building Authority. So since coming to government, we've invested nearly $13 billion to modernise Victoria's school system and to ensure that it's equipped to prepare our young people for the changing world and the new types of challenges that they'll face uh, in the 21st century and to make it easier to un unlock and develop their talents. And our Best Start, Best Life reforms mean a massive expansion of early learning and the state's largest investment in kindergarten buildings. We've already committed $1.6 billion to kindergarten infrastructure as we've rolled out our nation-leading three-year-old kindergarten reforms. And as we'll see tonight, those reforms and the building programs that support them are well and truly underway. With your help over the past two years, we've built and expanded enough kinders to ensure every three-year-old in the state can get at least five hours of early learning a week. No small uh, feat. We became the first Australian state to fund two years of kindergarten, and from next year, we're making kinder free for every child enrolled in a three and four-year-old kinder program. Over this decade, we'll triple those early learning hours uh, for three-year-old kinder and double them for four-year-old kinder with the creation of a pre-prep year. We're gonna need more kinders and bigger kinders. 
Kinder's designed to inspire the curiosity of young minds in new ways, and Kinder's designed to inspire staff, making it easier for them to try new activities or teach in new ways. Kinder's designed to be inclusive so children of all abilities can get the very best start in life. And we'll also be building 50 government owned and operated early learning centres to support families access affordable and quality early childhood education and care in communities in childcare deserts. I've seen right across the state uh, examples of how good design can support and enhance great teaching. So just as your ideas have pushed Victoria to the forefront of global school design in recent years, there'll be new opportunities for you to apply those skills and your innovation and talents to early learning design in the future. So I'm really looking forward to recognising and celebrating your efforts tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Minister Stitt. As my son, he's in year 10, still his favourite time at school. He absolutely loved kinder and um, kinder teachers are very, very special people. So great to see spaces that are created for them to help our children flourish. So before we get proceedings underway, I would like to thank our judges, Jill Garner, the Victorian Government Architect, Dr Philippa Socio, a lecturer of the University of Melbourne Facility of Architecture, who specialises in teaching and learning environments. Avril Shihab Smith, who leads the Victorian School Buildings Authority Delivery Division. And Jessica Spears and Dan O'Brien, who jointly manage the VSBA grants that are funding the massive expansion of Victoria's kindergarten system. So they have asked me to pass on their thanks to you for making their job extremely difficult. It was very hard for them to pick a winner. They had to weigh up the architectural merits of compelling collections of schools and kindergarten projects completed between June 2020 and June this year. As you will see shortly, the judges had some very unique projects to consider. And for the first time ever, there are a couple of categories where the judges simply couldn't decide between two outstanding entries and they are going to have for the very first time joint winners in the history of these awards. So stay tuned, we're in for a very interesting night. Made some people very excited I saw there more chances. <laughs> so, so we have nine winners to announce this evening, including a special minister's award. All entries are considered for that special award. It might recognise a particular aspect of outstanding design that promotes innovation in education, or perhaps a project that doesn't fit neatly into the regular award categories. So our format this evening is very simple. I'll introduce the shortlist projects for each award. The ministers will announce the winners, and we will invite each representative from the winning firm to come to the stage via these stairs here on my left, and you will come here you will collect your award and we will have a photo taken on stage. So we also have some certificates for the non-winning finalists and the schools involved. So to keep things moving, VSBA staff have those certificates for you on the table near the photo media wall, which is here just to my right at the side of the room. So when we are through announcing, it's like the worst teacher ever just given you 25 instructions at once. So when we are through announcing the awards, we invite those finalists and schools to collect their frame certificates and make use of the photo walls there and also our photographers so you can record this magnificent moment. So let's get started. So we begin tonight with the first ever award for Best Kindergarten of Early Learning Centre. Originally, there were going to be three early learning awards, two based on the project budget and one based specifically on an outdoor space. But we know what happens with the best laid plans of men, mice and architects. As we heard earlier, this is the first year kinders have been included in these awards, reflecting the massive amount of construction happening in this sector to lay the foundations for those important early learning reforms. We didn't know what to expect, and when the judges looked at the entries, it was clear that sticking with the original categories would not fairly reward the best work. 
So they have combined the early learning awards into one and shortlisted two inspiring entries that clearly stood out and would have been outstanding in any category. So let's have a look at what caught the judges' eyes. The first is Frobel Early Learning Centre in Carlton, designed by Sylvester Fuller. It was completed early this year for $5 million. This project follows the increasing trend of placing early learning centres within buildings that are designed for other things. In this case, it sits within the new Melbourne Connect Innovation Precinct, a building that brings together university research, start-up entrepreneurship supported by government and industry, a science gallery and accommodation for a hundred of postgraduate students. The challenge for Sylvester Fuller was that it was an irregular shaped building and their brief was to design a series of play and learning spaces over three levels. They had connected these indoor and outdoor spaces with timber lattice that is beautiful, practical and reflects the hybrid engineered timber design, building design. The judges thought this was particularly clever and it brought a sense of joy in the way it branches out to connected spaces within providing seating, storage, display shelves and containers for plants. It also dampened sound, allowing different place, play spaces to sit alongside each other without any other structures that could restrict visibility for staff. It softens but complete, doesn't completely hide the ceiling services. That ties in with Frobel's approach that children should develop a curiosity about STEM at a very early age. Overall, the judges described this design as an exemplary example of what's needed to create successful multi-purpose buildings. Also shortlisted for this award was AOA Christopher Peck for their design on the Wellington Integrated Child and Family Hub. This Mulgrave hub was created, was completed last year for 4.5 million. The project brings together childcare and early learning maternal health services and community facilities for local families. It replaces a previous early learning centre on the same site and a critical part of the brief was that the architectures retain the public park feel of the location. As we can see from the outcome, the architects took on that challenge with a passion. Their design recesses into a landscape. They not only located the centre to retain mature native trees, they sculptured the building design around a significant eucalyptus. This makes a stunning focal point for the kinder rooms as well as providing shade. The nature focus extends further with an external timber cladding which will weather with time. The judges also praised how natural materials featured inside saying it created a warm and inviting environment, successfully linking indoor and outdoor spaces. They also liked the playful, whimsical aspects of the kindergarten rooms with the overscaled porthole windows and the blue carpet tiles used for floor games. So there are a couple of fantastic designs there to kick off our e evening. Minister, can you please announce for us the winner of the inaugural Best Kindergarten of Early Learning Centre Award. This award for Best Kindergarten and Early Learning Centre has been jointly won by AOA Christopher Peck for Wellington Integrated Child and Family Hub and Sylvester Fuller for Froebel Early Learning Centre Carlton. Let's move on to our school awards. Beautiful. These will be announced by our Education Minister, Natalie Hutchins. We start with the best school project under five million. Our first finalist is Y2 Architecture for the upgrade of White Hills Primary School completed last year for $4.6 million. This was a major transformation for this Bendigo school. It had a main building built in the 1980s that no longer suited modern teaching. It was a massive rabbit warren of individual teaching and administration spaces. It was dark, uninviting and difficult to navigate. When the school began discussing this project with Y2 Architect, they realised that students using the newer parts of the school were getting better learning opportunities. The challenge became 
began to smash into the inconsistencies to remove the barriers to 21st century learning. Y2 did this economically, making as much as possible of the original building and materials, but opening it up into a series of flexible learning neighbourhoods. They created these with each year level so they designed could best support the curriculum. They connected with two inviting internal courtyards known as sun labs. They could, use, could be used for outdoor learning and have totally changed the building's character with more natural light and better circulation. Students have gained modern flexible learning studios, breakout spaces, presentation areas and collaborative maker places. The wider community benefits too, with a multi-purpose area that caters for small, medium-sized events, including somewhere for the growing local current population to meet and socialise. Next in the running for this award is Workshop Architecture for the new science and food technology building they completed in 2022 at Stahl Secondary College for $4 million. This school had more buildings than its students' numbers could justify, but several were ageing and no longer fit for purpose. However, at its core, it also had prize heritage administration building and it had the need for modern science classrooms and laboratories. Workshop architectures treated the large campus as a village, grouping, facilit grouping facilitates into disciplines and clustering them around the original heritage building. They demolished two redundant classroom blocks and slotted the new science and food technology building into place. Their intention was to meld it as much as possible within the original fabric of the school, as well as acknowledging local Indigenous heritage. A highlight in this approach is the steeply pitched feature roof and overhanging eaves that both practical in the Wimmera climate and reflect the design of the heritage building. They have connected the two sections of this building with a stunning central skylit corridor. Beneath the skylights, they placed timber batten battening that served as sun shading as well as echoing the diagonal pattern patterning of local indigenous shields and other artifacts. The school has maintained the modern facilities in it needs for the future and a building that respects the history surrounding it. So Minister, who is our winner? So the winner of the best school project under $5 million is Workshop Architecture for the Science Building at Stahl Secondary College. Now we move on to the best school project between $5 million and $10 million. Our first finalist is Project 12 Architecture for the gymnasium they designed for the Cowes Primary School, completed for the start of this year for $5.5 million. It was, a it was a competition grade gym, meaning as well as the kids being able to use it during the day, it suits wider community after hours and on the weekends. To the judges, it was simply a lovely piece of architecture. Carefully planning has made it functional, flexible and beautiful. Not to mention it was built on time and under budget. They particularly appreciated the sitting of the building next to an existing pool and hard courts to create a sports hub on the school grounds and next to the area of native bushland that becomes an integral to the design. From the outside, they thought it blended into the new building, into the site wonderfully, describing it as a quiet addition. From the inside, they loved how the south wall of the windows framed the trees as well as providing natural ventilation. They also noted how the translucent cladding on the north and south side flooded the court with a diffused natural light, while letting the internal lighting shine out on, at night, as well as a welcoming beacon for evening visitors. This design includes an adjoining music room with a raised floor. This allowed for it to be storage, storage for performances and assemblies as required, or to shut off physically and acoustically with an operable wall. Clever, thoughtful stuff. Also up for this award is Gaima, Bailey Architects for the teaching block and natural playgrounds they completed last year in the Nidri Autistic School for 7.3 million. This project is a great reminder of what a good school design is all about. It has replaced relocatable classrooms and outdated building designed for mainstream teaching with learning environments that cater for specific needs of autistic students. 
That's the sort of impact that changes lives. The 12 purpose built classroom has given teachers greater flexibility to customise and diversity lessons around individual student needs. As you might expect in a new building of this type of school, the main classrooms are supported by resource rooms that are easy to access. And there are smaller breakout spaces that specialise learning of where the students can retreat. But what really stood out for the judges was the clever layout that arranges the classrooms around two central courtyards, as well as linking them to a sensory garden. This created additional outdoor learning spaces and provides a calm environment inside and out. This design understands the important role that nature can play in the development of these students. Large bitumen areas have been replaced by natural play spaces. These are shaded by retained mature trees and feature safety equipment design to develop kids stability and coordination. The judges thought there was a lot to learn from how this design supported the school's educational goals. So everyone, Please put your hands together for two great finalists. And Minister, can you please tell us who the winner is? The winner of the best school project between $5 million and $10 million is Project 12 Architecture, the gym at Cowes Primary School. Our next award category this evening is best school project above $10 million. Let's meet our finalists. First, we have the Billard Lease Partnership for Port Melbourne Secondary College. This was a $60 million school that took its first students this year. This is the first social infrastructural built in Australia's largest urban renewal project at Fisherman's Bend. Not long ago, this area was Melbourne's industrial heartland, known more for its factories and docks than its schools. Now the school is a hub in one of the city's fastest growing residential areas. Its design reflects local history and is geared to meet the future needs. Outside, the ship-shaped building acknowledges the community's maritime and industrial past. While within the walls, the design is forward-thinking, dynamic learning spaces with flexibility to evolve with changing styles of teaching and learning. The architects involved principals of other recently built vertical schools in their planning, gaining practical feedback and learning the lessons from past projects. The result is a relatively open plan environment with a state-of-the-art acoustic performance. On a limited footprint, all the learning spaces connect to outdoor terraces. There is easy access to adjacent, adjacent recreation spaces and transport networks. A timber surface at the heart of this building connects to each floor for wayfinding, and this is where the architectures have placed the staff zones to encourage communications with students and promote a mature learning environment. And connections with the, gov with the growing new community hasn't been forgotten. Outside of school hours, they are welcome to use and secure public forecourt, community food gardens, and other multi-use spaces. Also competing for this award is Grey Puxand for their work on the state's biggest schooling building project, the $119 million Greater Shepparton Secondary College. It was another of the 14 schools that opened this year. Our, th our thoughts are of course with them as this uncertain time of the floods and hope the damage to this school is minimal and that they are back on their feet and back to normal as soon as possible. It was a massive build to address big challenges. The regional city had four underperforming, undersized secondary schools offering their students a limited range of study options and aging facilities. The solution was to merge the four schools and their 2,300 students onto one new modern campus. The challenge how to gain the benefits, wider curriculum choice and better resources without losing the care and individual support we see in the small school communities. This could be achieved if the school was broken into smaller houses of around 300 students. Grey Puxan came up with a village town Scape concept, designing the school as nine houses clustered around three neighbourhoods, offering specialist science, design, technology and arts facilities. 
With this design, students can initially do most of their learning within their small house. As they get older and branch out to a more spe specialist area or subject area, they can work more with students from neighbouring houses with similar interest and share advanced neighbouring resources. For secondary students, Grey Park San added a separate enterprise and innovation centre with some of the best facilities in the state for career pathways into technology and science fields as well as performing and fine arts. They completed the campus with a substantial recreation centre offering two competition grade courts, gym and studios for dance and yoga. The judges acknowledged that this was an extraordinarily difficult project and praised the architectural ideas that make it work. They noted details that stop people also getting lost on such a big campus, like the central courtyard with paths and open space branching out to the local river and individual houses. They thought the building forms, the common roof lines and the choice of materials work aesthetically and practically, creating the town feel while also considering acoustics, weather protection and natural light. So two amazing pieces of work here. So let's congratulate our finalists. I think their work has been outstanding. Let's give them a round of applause. A minister. Please tell us who the winner is. The winner of the best school project above $10 million is Gray Paxson for Greater Shepherd and Secondary College. Our next award is for best primary school project. First up is Kirsten Thompson Architects and McBride Charles Ryan for their design at Clyde Creek Primary School. This is the, another of the new schools opening for families in the high growth areas this year. Starting with Barron Gr Greenfield site, the architectures, architects had created an environment that judges described as relaxing, warm and cosy. They put this down to great attention to detail. Some thoughtful use of colour and materials and the beautiful flow between the inside and outside areas. In many ways, this campus has a standard collection of playgrounds and learning administration buildings that you would expect in a new primary school. But the judges loved the arrangements of these basic elements. The buildings form a circular cluster around an open space known as the Civic Heart. Apart from serving as an outdoor learning and play area, the Civic Heart has become a local gathering space for the school community and visitors. And while the building exterior faces the streets, a metal clad to be neutral backdrop to the perimeter, the perimeter landscape, those facing the Civic Heart are brick walls with the warm earthy tones. That colour palette and the use of natural materials has extended inside, creating the same warm and calm learning environment. At the eastern edge of the circle of buildings in the school's gym and performing arts building known as the Community Hub. It has a separate public entry as it is shared with local residents after hours as a valuable recreational facility for this rapidly developing suburb. Also in the running for this award is the Peter Elliott Architect and Urban Design for their major rebuild of the Sandringham Primary School. This school was significantly damaged by fire in 2022 that destroyed half of its building and forced it to be relocated to a temporary site at another local school. Sandringham Primary is one of the oldest schools in Victoria, first opening in 1855. The architects wanted to honour this history as well as create modern learning spaces for generations to come. They consulted with the community about what they valued most about the old school and worked to salvage, retain and recreate those elements in their new design. The inevitable hybrid outcome outcome of the new and old was described by the judges as visibly interesting, well integrated and beautifully done. This was achieved with the design used gable roofs and brick walls. This related to the older design but as a contemporary and fun collection of brick textures and colours. The much loved internal courtyard has, been, has also been recreated along with a new arrival forecourt. To gain the additional open spaces needed, the architects replaced the original sprawling single storey structures with a more compact and efficient double storey building. 
There is a silver lining to this tragedy is that students and teachers have gained more outdoor space and more modern facilities with better natural light and ventilation. So Minister, two very different entries there for you. So which one is our winner? For Best Primary School, the award is shared by two listed entries. Kirsten Thompson Architects and McBride Charles Ryan for Clyde Creek and Peter Elliott Architecture and Urban Design for Sandringham. So as our second category tonight with joint winners, again the judges found it impossible to choose between them. So congratulations to the four, four, four firms and both schools involved in that one. So we just have two awards remaining. Our next is the Best Secondary Schools Project. Up for this is GHD Woodhead and Grimshaw for their design in the Wurrung, Wurrung Senior Campus. Let's have a look at this innovative new campus shared between the senior students of Collingwood College and Fitzroy High School. It opened this year at Fitzroy Gasworks Development after being completed for $84 million. The judges described it as a sophisticated design that created a mature learning environment just like a university, which is perfect for developing the year 12 and 11 students it caters for. The vertical building is built over six levels, each housing a specialist precinct, such as performing arts, visual arts, technology, science, food, technology, or sports. Between the precincts, the architects have placed spaces that encourage learning and new ways of thinking across disciplines. Sometimes, sometimes these are breakout areas or small group spaces. Sometimes it is achieved with openable walls or using glass to create visual connections. Each level also has a terrace, some with outdoor learning resources relating to their precinct. Food technology students can grow fresh produce in raised garden beds. Art students have an outdoor kiln and the science areas are located near the rooftop solar panels to use them as a learning resource. Of course, these terraces are also used for socialising and recreation. There is even an outdoor sports court on the roof with amazing city views. A special aspect of the campus design is now, design is how it features local First Nations history and continuing culture. The designers have worked in partnership with the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung elders and artists to embed that throughout their interpretive installations, signage, planting, colour palettes, a mural and story panels. Even the campus Woiwurrung is the Woiwurrung Woirung word for the Manigam tree that is central to local indigenous cultures. Minister, I understand that this entry stood out so much for the judges, they didn't declare any other finalist in this category. So you may get an envelope, you may not. <laughs> so, if you could... I think it's nice for the uh, yes. winners to be able to uh, hold on to this. Our clear winner is obviously GHD Woodhead and Grimshaw uh, for our own, uh, senior campus. So. so now we come to the final award of this year, the Special Minister's Award. This is selected from all entries and recognises a particular outstanding design that's perhaps not covered in the criteria of the regular categories. So, Minister, who stood out for you in 2022? Do tell. Thank you, Shelley. Can I to acknowledge traditional owners of the land on which we are and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging? Pay my respects to you, Shelley, for being our MC today. Um, it obviously is not easy, uh, having been in the role as Minister uh, for Education for uh, just on three months, and I've been able to manage to, to visit around 52 schools in that time, and there is so much wonderful design, and I want to thank the judges uh, for all the work that you've put in, because I'm not sure that I could have picked between some of those programs. Uh, today, I had the privilege of visiting Cranbourne West um, Primary School and, um, and Dandenong North uh, Primary School. Both have amazing uh, brand new buildings in place, some construction still underway, but um, I was really, really impressed with 
uh, multi-use spaces and the never-ending options that teachers and kids have uh, with our new buildings and the great designs. And I had the absolute pleasure yesterday of opening the Centre for Higher Education Studies, uh, which is an amazing uh, building that, and I say amazing not only for the design, but for what it's about to deliver for kids in public education who have really extraordinary abilities to be able to study a range of subjects they perhaps may not get access to uh, in their local areas through that new facility in uh, South Yarra in partnership with a number of schools in the local area. So some may not have been uh, entered for the awards that we've seen tonight, but certainly um, I know that there is some fantastic work going on uh, around the place because I see it with my own eyes and I hear it from teachers at schools that I visit. Um, never underestimate the power of your work to, do, to help us deliver a better education. Um, I've heard messages from students um, who are so proud of working and learning in new facilities, um, making it easier for them to grasp new concepts, whether it be uh, through new STEM centres that allow a group of Year 9 students to study robotics for the first time, or the flexible classrooms that are giving teachers more options, um, from gyms and theatres to uh, shared spaces with the wider community. We know that turning our schools into enriched community hubs is one of the best things we can do, particularly in our growth areas and rejuvenating older sub, uh, suburbs as well. These are differences that help to change the lives and broaden the futures, and you can be really proud, everyone in this room, for your contribution. I'm conscious that you were working on the most, most of the projects that we've seen tonight throughout uh, the COVID pandemic. Um, and I want to acknowledge the challenges that you would have faced um, as designers and for those uh, that are involved in building. There's no doubt um, that what has come about out of COVID has seen a new uh, inspiration for so many schools to be able to return to the classroom with new facilities that are just so fantastic. One design though uh, struck me and the judging panel as being extremely unique and it's worthy of special recognition, but it doesn't uh, neatly slot into any of the categories that we've seen tonight. However, it will make a major impact on improving teaching at every type of school across the state. So the winner of my special award tonight for 2022 is Design Inc. for the new Victorian Academy of Teaching and Learning. This is um, the Academy's new home uh, that's nestled amongst government buildings in Treasury uh, Place. It's a $16 million transformation of an 1858 heritage building that was once housed, which once housed the government print works. Um, this year it opens its doors as an inspiring contemporary centre for advanced professional development uh, for our leading teachers and principals. It's, some, it's somewhere for the most exceptional teachers from public and private sector to gather, learn from each other and use best practice. We wanted this building to make a statement and I tell you what, it certainly does. Thank you Design Inc for making that statement come to life. The purpose of this building is stunning, the repurposing is even more stunning. We still have the important heritage features, the ceilings, windows and grand dimensions, uh, and the very, very Melbourne bluestone walls in the basement, which have a really unique smell to them as well. Um, but you've given them new life and the light-filled upper floor has a dynamic circular centre with a seating that rotates around to suit both small and large presentations. The soft curtains, the atmospheric basement, Everything about it is just magnificent, not to mention the chill out garden room uh, that exists. I'm not sure if I've got the title right, but I do uh, remember walking through it. Congratulations to Design Inc, a great job uh, of absolutely great importance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. And that is a wrap of the 2022 Victorian School Designs Award. Travel well and thank you.